take your Bibles. You know what? Turn to Galatians 5, and I want to give anybody, I just feel like somebody might have a testimony this morning they want to share. And so if that's you this morning, now's your time. Anybody just want to stand up and rejoice? Tell some, maybe you can tell somebody just how good God is. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Let the redeemed of the Lord go ahead, Sister Tammy. Amen. And Tammy, we're going to pray for you. Tammy has been battling cancer for quite a while. And this latest bout is getting her down. Now, her husband, Chris, first time I met him, he come down in the parking lot, and I had my gun in my pockets. So I didn't know who this rascal was. And I met him out there in the parking lot. I was fixing to leave, and he pulled in. And God, he had been watching our stuff on the Internet. God had been dealing with him. He started coming, started bringing his wife. Well, really, that's how we met Brother Charles and Sister Betty, was through them. And I want you to pray for Chris, because he's battling. Okay? The struggle is in himself. He's not fighting God, okay? He's fighting, he's fighting the worst part of himself. And so, I don't know, God just set my heart on Chris first time I met him. And I just love him dearly. And I had a good chance to talk to him the other day and talk to him at the funeral home, talk to him the day of the funeral. Talked to him while they were here the other day for the wedding. And I, wanted you, I want you to pray. I want you to remember to pray for Chris. Okay? Uh, I told him, I said, Chris, I'm your buddy, right? And he said, yeah. I said, I, you know I love you. He said, I know that. I said, God's closer to friend to you than I am. I said, he loves you more than I do. And I said, I promise you, God's not going to give up on you. So I want you to pray for him, lift him up. And Tammy, you have my permission to go and say, they were talking all about you during church today. Okay? But just tell him we love him. And tell him we're, we're waiting for God to move in him, and we'll see him here. Amen? Anybody else got a word of testimony? Sister Lynn. Right. Charles Estes was one of those men, and I'll never forget it, Sterling was with me. Your mom called me and said, can you come to the hospital today? And it was on a Saturday, I believe. And we went over there, and God, God blessed us with having prayer with your dad not too long before he died. Same thing that God allowed me to do with my own dad was just to be able to pray for him and with him before he died. And I think that's God letting us know that he's got it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hunter. Amen. All right. Galatians 5. Anybody else? Galatians 5. Go ahead, Trishy. Look, she's crying. Bless her heart. We love you.
what happened? Mm. What was her first name? Bethany. Bethany. We're going to pray for Bethany's family. Amen. How old was she? 20? And you wonder why God will take somebody that young. I don't have the answer to that. We won't know until we get to heaven, and then we'll know what God knows. But what I've learned is that I trust God. And Trish... I love you because you don't mind openly admitting in church that you struggle and that you and I've known you 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 have bouts of this bouts of doubt I call it and she shares this with our church but she's not the only one that goes through that. Even the preacher does every now and then. Okay? And everybody in this church, Trish, they know exactly how you feel. They know what you're going through. They had it happen themselves. God has brought them through. They're still here. Okay? Okay? And one of the things that I'm, you know me, I'm always going to insist in this church, we're going to be honest about who we are and what we have to face and what we have to deal with because if we can't be honest here, we're certainly not going to be honest out here. But we come here, we had, the Bible says, uh, what is it about confessing your faults one to another? It did not say confess sins, but confess faults one to another. I'm faulty. She's faulty. You're all faulty. And God has brought us together into this place to fellowship, to love one another, and for us to express our concerns about ourselves. Others are going to pray for her. Look at that. Bless her heart. See, that's the kind of stuff about Bethel I like. And, and Stacy. I like Stacy too. But that's the kind of stuff about this church I like. And let's not ever quit that. If that disrupts the service, then so be it. Because each one of us will have our times when we come here. We'll wish somebody had come and told us, Hey, I love you. I know what you're going through. And I want to be praying for you. Amen? Amen. Now I'm going to get mean. No, I'm not. Galatians 5. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for being a Christian. Thank you for being a Christian, Trish. Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh and these are contrary, the one to the other. So that, and Trish, I want you to look at this, so that you cannot do the things that you would. She's admitted that she wants to do right, but there are times when she has a struggle doing them. She's not abnormal. She's not the worst person here and the only one that has that problem. Okay? 
So let's, let's get over ourselves for a minute and understand that it happens. It happens to me. It happens to my wife. It happens to my girls, my boys. It happens to people that I love here. It happens. Best thing to do is to get honest about it and ask for help. God's people will love on you and we'll get you through this. This is a Sinners Anonymous group. I mean, if you go to AA, you're a drunk. And every now and then in an AA meeting, some new guy will come in and he'll be sitting there going, I don't need this. I don't need this. But you needed it. And we'll come into the house of God and God will be dealing with you and you'll say, I don't need this, I don't need this, but you're the one that needed it. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the message in just about two minutes. But anyway, let's, let's read this. So that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. What I was going to deal with today was variance. And in case you don't know what that means, you'll have to wait, because I ain't going to tell you today. I'll give you a little clue. There are some people that when the rule is get up at 8 o'clock, they're not going to get up at 8 o'clock just because the rule says get up at 8 o'clock. They're going to get up at 9 or 10 or 11, but they're not going to do it. For them, rules are made to be broken. Variance means... It's just like if there's an ordinance in a city and you want to do something and it violates the ordinance, you can go to the city planners and say, I would like a variance on this, on this ordinance, but here's why and here's what I want to do. And sometimes they'll see the wisdom of it and they'll give you a variance on that and you get to do it. So here's the rule, but here's what you want to do. Now, I mean, there's a legal way to do that, and that's all fine today, but that's not what this is. Having, having a variance nature is no matter what the rule is, you're going to break it. You're going to do it just because you think you can, and you think you can get away with it. And there's some people that no matter what, they're just going to break rules. But I'm not going to preach that today. Variance, emulations, wrath, strive. I got all four of those together because I think they're in a clump. Variance, emulations, wrath, strive. That's how we deal with issues of life. And then seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But then look at the opposite of that. In verse 22, look in your Bible. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. How many of you like to have joy this morning? Joy. Peace. Sister Betty, your husband is gone from you, but he's not lost. We know exactly where he is. And so... In some, in some respects, there is an amount of joy in us in knowing that at the right time in his life, he surrendered to the gospel and made things right with God. Now, so what if it took him, how old was he? 83. So what if it took him 80 years? Okay? God finally broke through in that man's life. And we have a certain amount of joy and peace knowing that that's where he is. That's where Brother Keith is. That's where Danny is. That's where David is. That's where Jimmy Carmichael is. That's where Charles Estes is. That's where uh, Lee Walsh is. That's where Milton Hoggart is. All these men 
God broke through in their life. Your dad wasn't the only dad that had problems, Lynn. Okay? Mine had his share. But God busted through every one of them. Okay? And that's the joy that we have in knowing that God took care of it. God, God's got it. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now turn your Bible to Romans 8. Romans 8. I want to give you a little something to help you this morning. I'm going to cut you loose. You get to Romans 8, we're going to have a word of prayer. God bless you this morning who are here. And God's dealing with you. God's working in you. God's breaking you. God's helping you. Those of you watching in online, same thing. God bless you if God's working in you. God's dealing with you. I had an email come in last week. I preached on hatred. And somebody emailed me and said, Pastor, I'm, I'm dealing with that right now. And they said, that message was right to me and I needed it. Because they're so full of hatred. And remember, two types of hatred. One, I was preaching last Sunday's message. Two types of hatred. One is you hate people without a cause. But the other is, you hate people because of what they did to you. Now, that part there, harder to overcome. Because the hatred, in some respects, is somewhat justified. They pulled it out of you for what they did. But God takes both of them either way, and He lifts that burden off of you, and you just don't, hatred is a hard thing to carry around in life. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray, dear God, that you would lead in this message. Lead, Father, lead me to say, Father, what you're wanting me to say. Lord, I told you this morning, God, that if you wanted to change the message, you could. I had no idea, Lord, what was going to happen. And Lord, even when I was studying this out yesterday, Lord, it just seemed like maybe it wasn't right. But Lord, I trust you. And so, Father, help me to share this morning what I've learned, what I know. And Lord, let it be a blessing to our sisters here, our brothers here. Let it be a blessing to our children. Let it be a blessing, Lord, to maybe some saint out there that's, I mean, they're having a really, really hard, terrible time. Maybe some, Lord, have fallen right back into some of the old habits, some of the old sins, God, that they wanted pulled out of they've got right back in them got right back in the old ways gotten lazy with you ain't ain't living right they're not reading the bible they're not praying they're not coming to church the lord had just anything lord that had just hit them the devil knows how to hit us all and so father i pray dear god lord i've got some people on my mind right now lord that just need a blessing from you and they need help and maybe, God, they're in a place where they can't ask you for help. So, God, I'm going to ask for them. And God, that you would help them and break through in their life. And, Lord, leave a lasting change in their life. And Father, help me to say what I'm going to say. Let it be a blessing to somebody. And Father, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Back there in Galatians. He said, I still have it up on the screen, verse 17, the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Understanding that in your life right now, if you're saved and you're born again and you know it, okay, I'm not saying that you're perfect, I'm saying if you know that God has forgiven you your sins, raise your hand, okay, good. You, you have two things with you right now. Flesh and the Spirit of God. The flesh, now Romans 7 teaches this very clearly. And I love Romans 7. I love, there's a story attached to it. It's, that's the story of Nabal and Abigail, and I'm not going to get into that. But you have 
as long as you live in this world, there is a dual nature about you. You have your flesh, which is always going to be contrary to God's law. Always. Then you have the indwelling Spirit of God living in you. Know you not. Now listen to this. He said that your body is the temple of God. Your physical, that, that very flesh, that very flesh and bone body that has all that sin nature in it is the place that God himself decided to live in. Now let me give you an example of something. When Adam sinned, God cursed the ground with what? Thorns. There's a tree in the Bible that it grows thorns. And that's really all it does. I've seen them in Africa. They call them the acacia trees. In the Old Testament, they were referred to as shittim trees. But they were basically, we used to call them sticker trees, sticker bushes. We'd be whizzing through the woods, Jared, and all of a sudden we'd run into a batch of them. And all of a sudden, now you're stuck. You have sticker trees all over you. Now you listen to me. When God told, is, when God told Moses to build the tabernacle, guess what wood he told him to use for the boards, for the Ark of the Covenant, for the table of showbread? Guess what wood God told him to use? Shit them tree. That shittim tree represents your flesh. So God took you, but He didn't leave you that way. He said, take those boards, overlay them with gold. Cover them. Gold that never perishes. Gold that's like the streets up in heaven. Because gold never perishes, that represents God's mercy which endureth forever. And God, here's what God did for you. God took your flesh and He overlaid it with His mercy. And covered up all the thorns. That's good, isn't it? See, that's what you get from studying the Bible. Now, Romans 7, that verse up there where Paul said in verse 17... These are contrary to one to the other, so you cannot do the things you would. Romans 7, look in your Bible, because I don't have it on the screen. Verse 14, Romans 7. For we know that the law is spiritual. See it? The law is spiritual, spirit. But I am carnal. Carnal means meat, flesh, sold under sin. Verse 15, Trish. For that which I do, I allow not. You broke your own rules, didn't you? So did I. Broke my own rules. And I'll be honest with you. When I'm doing well, and just staying away from the world, and just, I mean, I'm thinking right, I'm living right, I'm, I'm righteous with God. You know what creeps up in me? Accusations against everybody else. That ain't good. Because when I'm good, I get too cocky. And then I'm like, what's wrong with the rest of you? How come you can't live right? I forget. That even though I'm good for a while, I'm not good forever. And so God has a way of bringing me down. So that I look at everybody and I'm going, I love sinners. Oh, you did something wrong. Oh man, I'm right there with you. I'm telling you what's in my nature. And more than likely, you're the same way. When you're good, you start pointing your finger at everybody. Look at you. What's wrong with you? How come you can't live right? That's what we do. 
So that which I do, I allow not. I broke my own rules. For that what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. I do the things that I hate. So then verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now the, the, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. This is why you stink. You stink. Brian, you stink. Your armpits smell. Amen? Your breath stinks. Everything that comes out of your body stinks. You're corrupt. There is no good thing in you. But for the will is, verse 18, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So back up that verse again. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But then, now verse 18, but if you be led by the what? Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, look at Romans 8. Look at Romans 8. Verse 1. There is therefore now how much condemnation? No. They caught a woman in adultery. Near as I remember, it takes two to tango. But they didn't, they didn't catch the guy. They pulled the woman out, caught in adultery. And they slung her out in the street, and they all picked up stones. They was going to kill her. And they said, but Moses and the law told us to do this. And what did Jesus say? Now, you're going to hear preachers in other churches say, now the original Greek kind of gives the idea that he who is without this sin, let him, that's not what it says. That's not what your Bible says. It says, let he who is without sin, let him first cast a stone. There was only one in that whole group who was without sin, and that was Jesus. And not even he picked up a stone. So what did he do? Woman, thy sins be forgiven thee. And he said to the woman, because after everybody left, he said to the woman, Who is here that condemneth thee? And she said, None, my Lord. He said, Neither do I condemn thee. Look at your Bible. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you in Christ Jesus? And if you're not sure, well, I don't understand what that means. Think of a box, Right? A box, and let's say the box is Jesus. Am I getting out of the Bible? No. The ark was a box. Noah's ark was a big shoe box. You know how little boys will put all their little dinosaurs and their animals inside a shoe box? Right, Dakota? Okay. I saw Tris smile as soon as I said that, and I'm going, he must have had a little box where he put all his little dinosaurs, his little army men, and his cars in a box. That was the ark. Where was Noah? In the ark. Some people get the idea that God wants us to drive a peg on the outside of the ark and hang on as long as we can. That's not Bible. That's not how it works. God put us in Christ. And not even Christ. Think about what Je when Jesus wanted to move across a body of water, what was his preferred method of doing it? Walking on top of it. Jesus doesn't sink. The water of the flood was condemnation. Noah and his family was that was there was eight people, and you're in chapter eight. I don't think that's a I don't think that's a mistake. Eight people on the ark. Eight is the number for new life and new beginnings. And eight people walked off of the ark being saved because they were in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation to you now that you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, not me. Amen.
There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the... Now the Spirit is what you're holding in your lap right now. And if you don't have a Bible in your lap, there's one in the pew right in front of you. Get it out, open it up, Romans 8. You walk after the Bible. The Word of God, Jesus said, The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. The Spirit speaketh expressly. That's your Bible. So we're going to read this, and we're going to say Spirit, and then we're going to say Bible, because they're the same thing. Verse 2, for the law of the Bible of life, Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For Verse 3, for what the law could not do. And see, that's just it. We set rules for ourselves saying we're not going to do this anymore and then we break our own rules. And as bad as we want to not break our own rules, you're going to break your own rule. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the... and the Bible. That means when you're having your worst day, read your Bible. That means when you think that God's done with you because you've sinned, get your Bible out and read it because God then is going to remind you that He still forgives. Now, He may chasten you, which is why you're going to feel bad for a while. Don't deny that. Let God chasten you. That is God's remedy to drive sin out of our life. And it works. Who in here knows it works? I mean, your mama did it, right? Your daddy did it. Or in my sister's case, my daddy never have to. My daddy just had to look at us and say something. He was six foot seven, so we pretty much did what the man said. It was mom. She was the whipper. Okay? And she didn't let us get by with anything. Verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Which is why, hey, hey, which is why you came to church today. Why did you come to church today? Because it's the things of the Spirit. Am I right? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded, minded after the Bible, is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Trish, your flesh can't do right. So, you don't mind me preaching to you today, do you? It's too late, I've already been, it's like 30 minutes. You open your mouth, and so, I believe God wanted the service to go this way. I understand being down on yourself. Because I get pretty hard on me because I'm the preacher. And I'm not ever to do anything wrong. But I get pretty down on me too. And when I do, I get in my Bible and I read it and remind myself of some things. Then I walk away. I let God chasten me. And I walk away knowing that God's still good to me. And He has washed all my sins away. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, and I'm going to be done. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. You're in the Bible, you're in the ark. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. So you have your flesh, 
and you have your spirit. Every dog is going to have his day, and you're going to have days where you're not doing well. I'm not just preaching to Trish, by the way, and getting everybody. That's when you need the Bible more than anything. The Bible will be the Holy Spirit in your life. The Bible will guide you. The Bible will help you. Those words are living. They are alive. They're powerful. And th that Bible, believe it or not, can do things in you that you cannot do yourself. So don't think, well, reading the Bible won't do any good. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. There was somebody yesterday having a bad day. And I said, God, give me a verse of Scripture. God gave me some psalms, and I sent it to that person. And it helped. And I'm just telling you, people, when you're at your worst, when you're at your worst, God is at His very best. So don't, I want to say don't be too hard on yourself, but I'm not going to tell you to not be hard on yourself. Don't condemn yourself so bad that now you think that you're not saved anymore. Definitely don't do that. I'm here to tell you, you're just as godly as anybody else is. Because the Spirit that brings life. I want us to bow our heads. And I am going to open up the altars this morning because I'm going to come and pray. I don't like myself when the world gets in me. But then again, I really don't like myself when I'm high on Jesus and all I do is condemn everybody else. Man, I hate me. I hate that part of me worse than anything. Because that ain't right. And so... I'm going to come and I'm going to, I'm going to confess and I'm going to pray that God will drive out of me being a, the accuser of the brethren. We already have a devil for that. We don't need anybody else. You don't need it. And I don't want it. But this morning, let's just come down and let's just be honest about who we are what we are and maybe Trish isn't the only one this morning that's being hard on herself or under conviction maybe God used her to awaken that in the rest of us so this morning in just the quiet time I want you to come join me down here at the benches and let's just pray for revival again.